In this video, we're going to be going over how I take a 3D scan and clean it up for 3D modeling. I'm going to be using Blender 2.81. Pretty much any Blender 2 version should have similar controls. Now we're just going to hit X to delete that. Now we're going to import our OBJ from that we exported from the scanning software. Just grabbing it here. Now, the first thing I want to do when importing any model is I want to make sure the texture works because this is very crucial towards the end when you're cleaning up the detail. Also, we're just going to reduce the size because as you can see, there is so many vertexes with how we exported it. So we're going to desymmetry, remove the vertexes down to a more workable amount. The more vertexes you have, the easier it is to push and pull and manipulate, but also the more time consuming it is because there is more vertexes and more clicks you have to do. So just going to run that again, still pretty dense. Just trying to get it to a level where there's enough vertexes to manipulate easily, but not so many that it takes me forever to do. Now just importing the body. We did this one in two sections because the top half of the scan worked so well and didn't have any real mess inside. So instead of having to rescan and clean the whole thing up just going to merge the two files together just lining them all up here we're just scaling and lining to make them look clean and kind of close together we will manipulate the files themselves to get them to fit but here yeah you can see the top part of the body is clean but the shoes are kind of messy inside and that's because the scanner doesn't know what to do because it can't see underneath it so it kind of just guesses and it does a real bad job and throws stuff all over the place so we're, main things we're going to use is C is going to be a select, draw select. We're going to use B for region select. Alt mouse click or shift alt mouse click is a loop select. L selects all connected surfaces, very useful. X deletes, H hides selected so we don't have to interact with it or worry about it. Alt H unhides, F is fill so if you click a couple of vertexes you can fill them. And then your mouse wheel to rotate and shift mouse wheel to move the view. Now we're just going to pick a section here to work on. Just going to B, or select the region. Now we're going to invert that and then hit H. And now we don't have to worry about messing up the rest of it. Now the other two main things we're going to use are the see-through view and the not see-through view because the see-through view also lets you click through things. So if you're trying to click vertexes, a lot of times there'll be one hiding behind other or it just won't catch. So that's where the see-through is very nice, but it also runs the risk of catching things behind the thing you were trying to work on. Now we've got some clippings. So we're going to go over here to view and we're going to add a couple of zeros so that we can just zoom in that much closer to get that much more detail on what we're working on. You would also have to increase the far distance if your model is too big. In this case, it's not really a problem. Now we're going to go to the see-through view, and I'm going to use the C-select tool. Now one problem with the C-select C -select tool is you have to right-click to disactivate it before you can move your view or do anything. You're pretty much locked selecting things until you finish with it. Now we have created ourselves a nice hole. Now we need to clean up this hole with either filling in small sections or deleting points that stick out into it to try and make a smooth surface all the way around so we can use the fill tool. So here we're just filling in small things using F. We've clicked four surfaces or four vertexes and hit F and that fills that in. And now we're just going to go around the entire edge and realize, okay, this sticks out. We're going to delete that. The next section, do we decide, oh, do we do want to delete the sticking out part or fill in the area behind it? And on a case by case basis, you just decide which is easiest to try and get a smooth a line as possible going around the outside. Here we have some more obvious pieces sticking out. Just going to remove those because they mess up a fill later if they're sticking out. Not the most serious, but they can kind of confuse it. And here's a little hole. So we're just going to fill that in because if I tried to delete those points, it would just work its way in farther. So we're going to build it out and fill there. That's an example there. Now looks pretty good. So we're going to just click a spot. Then we're going to Alt Shift click another spot and see if it will select. 
Oh, but it tried to select farther away, so we're going to just click there. Now we're going to find another point a little bit farther away, so hopefully it'll realize, oh, I'm trying to go this direction. And it did pretty good. It caught a decent amount of sections, so now we're just going to shift alt click another section and just keep adding these sections in and see it missed a spot there and it went up a different direction so we're just going to unselect that now you can see there is three spots here that are very obviously highlighted those are spots that were sticking out that we missed so we should have actually deleted those now they're small enough we're probably not gonna have to worry about them on this circle so we're just going to go to faces and we're going to go fill and it's just going to guess and fill this area Later, we'll come in and smooth that out, and it will bring in those vertexes, and we can clean it up, and it'll look great after that. So now we're just going to move our way around the shoe and look for the next spot, because here, if we just use L to select, we'll notice, oh, we saved out a couple of spots there. Not very big, but we've removed those and cleaned that up, but there's still more to do, so we just look for the next spot. We're going to be selected. and H will hide that. So now we'll be working on this section. Now we can just select using C, but since this isn't a see-through select, we don't quite catch as much. So delete. Now we have a rough outline of that area, but an L to select individual pieces. And it looks like we've done pretty good here. Invert, we can delete all of these now. But now we're going to have to go in and fine tune and clean up the smaller areas. Now here, just going to select through and delete that. Now we'll just fix this in this small hole. Do the same thing as before. Go around and either fill or remove points till we have a reasonable circle to fill. And that worked perfectly. So now here not really sure what's going on so let's just delete it and fill it in so go to select through there we go now delete vertexes ah and here's one of the big problems you got to remember to deselect what you were previously working on because you'll run into a problem where you have spent a whole bunch of time selecting all the surfaces or vertexes and if you hit delete you're going to remove your previous thing you worked on so it's always good to remember to deselect or click off before you start your next selection so you're not messing it up it's also very important in sculpting to make sure you don't have mirroring on because that can be a real pain now we're just going around and cleaning up anything sticking out and filling in the holes This can take a long time. And the better you do it, the higher chance your fill will look right. Because sometimes the fill will just be a mess and it'll shoot out in all directions. But here we're just doing that. There we go. Now we've tried to select this, but because it is such a big opening and it changes directions and stuff, the fill tool will just get confused. So we're just going to break it up into some smaller sections so we're just going to select four points and hit f and now we've broken it up into two separate sections and the bigger and more complex the fill is going to be the more sections you're going to want to fill this or more sections you're going to break it into because it's just kind of guessing which side goes to which side and so there we've got that that turned out beautifully and we were able to do this only two sections so we're just going to work on this last section over here there we go now we can clean that up in the sculpting so let's move over to sculpting now the first thing we need to do is turn off mirroring now here we're going to start with the smoothing tool and we're just going to smooth that out which draws yeah all the vertexes together and then oh we got clipping again so let's go back to view and add some zeros here for our how close we can get into things now we're just going to smooth that out and just cleaned it up now, at this point, we're not trying to shape it. We're just trying to bring the vertexes together. Now, when we go to the draw tool, now we're forming it. Or like drag tool. Um, and so, there we go. Just bringing it to a fairly good shape. Now, here, we have skipped ahead and cleaned out all the little openings. You can see here, we have now selected the inside. This is the 
unnecessary part that was inside that we slowly worked our way around and deleted with each little hole. So we're just going to delete that. And there we go. We've got cleaned out. We've cleaned out the shoes. The should have a fairly solid outside surface. Now we're just going to go in and clean up all those patches we made. Doing some more smoothing to draw them in. Now I'm just going to squish it, form it back into place. Then we're going to use the draw tool to like bring it out or push it in. You use shift or not, depending on what you've selected over on the right. So just, yeah, smoothing everything out. And if the vertexes do look really messy, you can just delete that section and fill it in again. Now here, the decimit or de top, I don't really know how to pronounce that. If you add that, it'll add vertexes as you're going, which is very helpful. It'll bring back the detail, but it also removes the texture. And you really need the texture up till close to the end because you want to, right now we're just drawing out where the shoelaces were because you wouldn't really see them on the actual like printed file because it has no texture, but the texture shows you it should be there. So now we're just kind of sculpting those details back in roughly, like we don't have to be perfect. We're just sculpting them back in. And then towards at the very end, when we're all done, you can come back over using the yeah add vertex function. And just if you run a smooth, it'll just round out all that detail. But for now, we're just going to be bringing out the detail so you can see it without texture. Now, before you do anything important, remember to save. Now here, instead of trying to fix the base plate, we're just going to add a nice round base. Just bring that right in there and then we'll just merge that into the shoes and it'll just be perfect. So just lining it all up here. Saving it again because we're going to do a, ah, uh, it's missing. Got to remember to go to preferences and add the bool tool. So in add-ons under preferences, just search bool or bleen or whatever. And just check mark that add on. It kind of comes with it, but for some reason it's not check marked. So now that we've added that under object, you'll find it right there. Now it's there. So back to the current project. We're just going to select the shoes and then the base plate. Go down. We've got the bull tool. Let's use an onion, which just merges them together. Ah, but we select them in the wrong order. So you're going to want to make sure the order is correct because of the texture. The the leading one is the texture. So we're just going to now this time, we're going to start by selecting the base, then the shoes. Now, if we do an onion, we confirm, yes, it was a clean onion. It, the surfaces, it was happy. It worked. It didn't make a mess inside. There we go. That's pretty much good. Now we can continue upwards and let's, now we've selected the body of the person. Now we're just going to form and shape. We're not affecting the shoes because we now are on the we selected the body of the person and then moved in and bring out any details. This is where the texture is really helpful. Any details like right here on the neckline, that was a nice textured line, but on the model itself, it didn't actually show up as anything. So now we're just going around and bringing out the details you see in the texture. Now you can see it's very obviously there. So we're just going to bring out those details and we've left enough detail in the mesh that we can just draw and push without having to use the um, funny named den top function. I don't really know what that means. Now we're going to do another save before we do another bleen because bleens have a high risk of crashing the program depending on how complex they are. We're going to do another there. Now the shoes have lost their texture, but because we brought the detail back, we can now continue to go over the whole thing, bringing back the detail in the face and the nose and mouth and everything. So at this point, once we have enough detail, we could do it. Importing the file into Prusa Slicer. Now we're going to click the little orange icon, which does a repair, which cleans up the outer surfaces. And so we're just going to look at this. Looked good. Looks like we have very few overhangs that are going to be an issue needing supporting. Like the hair is a few, but because we had the hands down and the chin just a little bit up, we don't have to worry about supports there. So now let's just export this because it's been repaired because a unrepaired model can sometimes have issues like it'll miss a layer or something will just be wrong. 
And it's a real pain when you import a model and you feel like, hey, layer is eight and nine are missing. So now your whole model is going to fail in the print process because there was some missing layers. So it's very good to have a it fully repaired and a, as a whole model. A lot of times a good software slicer will kind of auto repair itself, but it's good to just have a repaired model. Now that we are, let's say, finished with this model, we're going to do another desymmetry because it will keep the detail where it notices shapes and any like flatter surface, it'll remove more vertexes in. So we're just going to desymmetry. And as you can see, it's already less complex, still very complex. And you can continue to desymmetry and remove until just before it starts losing detail, like there in the face. But this is just going to drastically reduce the file size. So that can be very convenient. We're going to export it here and compare it to our original. Just going to add a B there. So now I'm going to bring on here the file size of the original is 154 megabytes. And now our newly exported with some reduction on it is now over 100 megabytes less. Like that just drastically takes down the size. And so here, let's just compare the files beside each other. You really can't tell a difference. They, from the detail you're working with, they're very good. Now, if you were blowing this up to actual human size or much larger, you might notice differences. But for the most part, they're practically the same, except one is over 100 megabytes smaller. Thank you for watching. I hope this helped.